Hey guys, Phil Swat here from Creative Effects. I'm going to show you today how to use Nuke's Planar Tracker to add a text insert to the front of a moving bus. Planar tracking is a great alternative to the traditional points based tracking and it is often used for screen inserts, camera stabilization, and to simplify it, clean plate generation and rotoscoping tasks. Right, so let's just jump into Nuke here. Uh, what I'm going to do is play through this footage and you can see this is the shot with the bus and what we want to do is map our own text onto the front of this bus here and the way we're going to do that is just using Nuke's planar tracker so I'm just going to scrub through here and you can see we just want to map it to the front here so what we want to do is just push tab and just type in planar tracker until it comes up and just click on that and then plug that into your footage here. If you just push one to view that. And what we want to do is just loosely create some roto. I'm just going to zoom in around the front of this bus. And you're just trying to get it onto this front plane. You can kind of be quite loose with this roto. Okay, you can see that I didn't really take much time to do some you know do good roto now what I want to do is just I'm gonna track backwards because I started at frame 16 and you can see now straight away it's sticking pretty nicely to the front of the bus I'm just gonna let that track backwards there you go you can see that if I scrub through there it tracked quite nicely and stuck to the front of this bus now if we just take the timeline back to frame 16 and we do the same tracking forward and this is where the planar tracker works really well when you have a nice plane you can see I didn't use the plane on any of these top bits as there's action going on behind and that could disrupt the tracker right I'm just gonna let this track forward and I'll pick up once it's finished Okay, now we're back and it has done a good job now of sticking to the front of this bus. If you scrub through, you can see it's done a pretty good job. But what we want to do now is just refine the tracker. So I'm going to go into full screen mode here and just zoom in. What you want to do now is just click on these two here. What first do is make sure that the Bezier is highlighted. If I just click on that, and what you want to do for this is just make sure you're on your reference frame. So I'm just going to click this button here that says go to reference frame. And now you'll see that this is yellow. That just indicates that you're on the reference frame. And now what you can do is just move these points around. And this is just kind of like designating the area where you're going to put something in. So what you want to do now is just line it up somewhere that you can see a good feature so you'll know when a track is slipping. I'm just going to put mine on the edges here. Okay, so what you want to do now is just go through the timeline and just check anywhere that the points slip. And when they slip, just make the adjustments, get them back on to your feature points that you, where you put them before. Well, I'm just going to go through now and do this and then I'm just going to speed this up so you don't have to sit and watch me do this. Okay, I've just done that really quickly now and we're back and the track is now a lot better. It's been refined a bit. You can click on the grid here. So once again, make sure that this is selected. That your Bezier is selected. Now you can click on this grid and you can see it on the front of the bus. There you go, you can see it sticking quite nicely now. So I'm just going to turn that off. And what I want to do now is just find a really good frame that's somewhere in the middle. I think I'm going to go with frame 50. I'm going to set this now to the new reference frame. 
So if you just click on this uh, button here, and just wait for it to highlight so you can see. It says set current frame to reference frame. So that's what I'm going to do now. And you can see that that's gone yellow just to indicate that. Okay, so I'm just going to exit the full screen here. Now what I'm going to do is just export this tracking data by clicking on corner pin 2D relative. So what that's done is it's made a corner pin node here, which we're going to use in a moment. I'm just going to drag this off to the side. Just create a bit more space. So what we did was we made the reference frame frame 50. So I'm going to create a frame hold now. And just set this to frame 50. Just plug this into my footage and hold command or control and then just click on this point just to keep things neat and organized. Now what we've got here is just the reference frame. So I'm just going to click on it to look at it. So we can make all our necessary changes to this. And first of all, we're just going to start by removing the text here. And the way I'm going to do that is by pushing P just to create a roto paint node. I'm just going to go to my clone brush, just make a few adjustments to it. Now what you want to do is just hold command or control and that just changes the sampling area. You can go in now. And just go in with your brush and clone out these areas. All this text. You can take your time with this. I'm just doing this really quick. But what I will do is just, I'll just have a little cheat. I'm going to take one that I created earlier. So this is for frame 50. Let's just paste that in. Now you can see I've cloned out all the text here. Now the next thing to do is just push K that creates a copy node. I'm going to plug the B input into the roto paint and then just push O to create a roto node. And now I'm going to roto this area here, just the sort of area that we want to insert. Okay, I'm just done this quite rough at the moment. I'm going to put a slight blur on that. I'm going to change this to alpha. And before I put the blur on, I'm going to push tab and just type in pre-melt. That's going to create a pre-multiply node. I'm just going to pre-multiply this, which gives us that. Now you can adjust your blur just to get a slight blur on the edges. Now what we want to do is take the tracking data and just plug this in. And also what we want to do is just create a frame hold node for the same frame 50. And that will just make sure that our clone brush, because at the moment if I scrub forward you can see the clone brush is only for frame 50. So if I put a frame hold in here, there you go, you can see that that works quite nicely. It just holds the clone brush through the whole thing. And now if we look at the tracking data, the you know, the corner per node at the end, if I start scrubbing through, you can see how that moves, you know, with the tracking data. So if I just pop a simple merge node in now, and you merge the A over the B, which is the original footage, And if we view that, you can see it now sticks to the front of the bus. The only thing we need to do is get some motion blur into the shot, just to match the original. So I'm just going to type in motion blur 2D. And then again, another one with vector blur. And just plug this motion blur 2D node under here with the vector blur following it. 
And with the Motion Blur 2D, it's got a 2D transform pipe. And what you want to do is just plug this into the corner pin because that's where it looks for the tracking data or any kind of movement data so it can work out the Motion Blur. If you click on Motion Blur 2D, you notice here it has an Output UV tab and it's set to Motion at the moment. So you've got to match that up in the Vector Blur settings. If you change that to Motion, you'll see straight away it's put some blur on it. If I go to a frame like this, Push D to disable it. You can see the difference it's making there. So now, if you want to add your own text, for an example, you can come in here just before the corner pin. I'm just going to type in text over here and merge that to here. I'm just going to type in create effects and just drag that just down here. And you can see now that when I play through it, it sticks quite nicely to the front of the bus and it has the same motion blur applied to it. Now with this shot you would need to do further work to finish it off. You would need to do some work to bring the reflection back over the patch that we've now put in. Basically with this shot we have locked the motion at frames 50 and we painted out the reflection. So you would need to do some work to bring this back. I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial because it is an advanced technique and there are many techniques to do this but this is something that you would need to do if you were working on a shot like this. Thanks for watching guys. Please leave your comments below and be sure to follow us on Twitter and the Facebook fan page. See you next time.